Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about driving tests and COVID and the pandemic in the world and how it's changed driving tests and what you can expect and what you need to do to pass first time and the reasons why you need to pass first time. Stick around. We'll be right back with that information. Hi there, Smart Drivers. Welcome back. Uh, Rick, tonight talking about COVID and your driver's test. Corey is here at Brooks for Wheels. Corey is the moderator and does a really excellent job of getting up the videos uh, for us, the ones that we recommend. Uh, Margaret's here. Margaret got your learners last Monday. That is awesome. <laughs> and you have done a lot of work, Margaret, so that's well-deserved. Uh, excellent. Congratulations. Cynthia is here from Arkansas. Neha uh, from Toronto. Excellent. We're unfortunately they're in lockdown in Toronto because of the pandemic. Tim is watching from Winnipeg. Catherine's here. Hello, Tim. Drive Smart BC. If you have any questions about uh, traffic, road regulations, rules, and whatnot, check out Tim's uh, website there at uh, Drive Smart BC. Tim has an excellent website. Tim is a retired uh, RCMP constable here in the province of British Columbia. Just Excellent, excellent resource there. So have a look at that as well. Uh, Brendan's here. DC is here. Quite a number of people here. That's awesome. So uh, yeah, let us know where you're from, where you're tuning in from, what class of license you're getting, and any way that we can help you out. Uh, and remember the secret. Don't tell anybody else the secret, okay? It's easier to get your driver's license in the winter time. So if you're postponing it, stop doing that. Get off the couch. <laughs> Go and practice your driving, book your driver's test, and get it done and get it over with. Okay, twins, guess what? I got my license last Wednesday. Your videos helped a lot. That's awesome. Congratulations. Uh, Dizzy, uh, you taught me how to drive manual. Thank you so much. You're most welcome, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy driving a manual transmission. So what we're going to do here is uh, the way it works is I have a slideshow presentation for you. The... Uh, presentation will take about 15 minutes at the most at the outside and then I'll come back and I'll spend the remainder of the time answering any questions that you have about passing a driver's test uh, you know the craziness that's in the day and age of COVID and as well the other uh, thing that I'll get you to check out Corey I'll put this up for you is the frequently asked questions that I've been working on over at the smart drive test website for you and I've got the first 30 states up not the first 30 states, not in alphabetical order. I'm going by population. So uh, I've got 30 states up. So check that out. Check that resource out. It's an excellent, excellent resource. And I'll come back and I'll, I'll lament to you about uh, driving manuals in the United States of America and reading through those. Pearson, good evening from Montreal. Just passed my knowledge test for my learners this afternoon. That's awesome. Congratulations. And Tim, you are most welcome, my friend. Okay. And getting over to the PowerPoint presentation. So we're talking about COVID, the pandemic, and what your driver's test is going to look like in this day and age. All right, so COVID-19. For those of you new to Smart Drive Test, my name is Rick August. Uh, I was a truck driver through most of the 1990s from, the United, from Canada into the United States. Uh, mostly Ontario, any, anything east of the Mississippi, but I did make it out west a few times to California. Oregon, Arizona, those places, and uh, became a licensed driving instructor in 1997 in an attempt to come off the highway. Uh, went back to university, finished my undergraduate at, the, at Western University in Ontario. Uh, was accepted to graduate school at the University of Melbourne in Australia, and graduated with my doctorate in legal history in 2006, which is the study of police and courts and prisons, and uh, my expertise, oddly enough, is in the area of policing as it relates to traffic. While I was going to the University of Melbourne, I drove coaches for Greyhound there. And uh, so I have experience driving buses as well. So I teach everything, buses, trucks, motorcycles, cars, <laughs> the, whole, the whole gamut. So if you want more information, check out my autobiography over on the Smart Drive Test website. And uh, new video this week, backing along a curb this is a requirement for new drivers backing in a straight line backing along a curb and it is the requirement for the california driver's test because they've eliminated the parallel parking in the state of california you simply have to back along a curb for 50 feet so i show you how to do that with pylons then you move out to the shoulder of a road and then finally along the curb once you get to the curb if you've done those first two steps 
getting along a curb is going to be fairly easy and you're not going to end up where the buggy ended up which is up on the curb <laughs> and i did that two or three times to get that picture for you all right so what is your driver's test going to look like in the day and age of covid it's going to be in the parking lot for the most part slow speed maneuvers with the examiner outside of the vehicle and if you have a closed circuit test and the examiner is outside of the vehicle you will have to bring your mentor with you for most of you that's going to be mom or dad uh, maybe an uncle maybe a friend a neighbor whatnot but you will have to bring your mentor with you to be in the vehicle with you while you're driving the parking lot test is going to take two shapes uh, the first one is it's simply going to be a series of slow speed maneuvers as you can see here in the image they have a large tire and they're getting driving students to parallel park off the large tires that's going to be a little bit weird for you if you're used to parallel parking with cones but it's going to be more or less the same and it's actually if you got a big tire like that it's going to be fairly easy because you can see the tire and you basically just have to get in straight behind it unless it kind of looks like they've got it up against a curb there all right so that's going to be the first thing is it's going to be a series of slow speed maneuvers the next one is it's going to be a parking lot test but it's going to be a mini driving course so they're going to have signs up they're going to have you know you drive down straight you turn left at the stop sign turn right at the stop sign uh you know go straight through at the yield or whatnot and then they're going to get you to do a series of slow speed maneuvers now it's going to be important you're going to be wearing a mask they're going to disinfect your vehicle uh, make sure that you have your window down make sure that you're listening ask your mentor to listen and relay instructions if you don't hear instructions if you don't hear the instructions from the examiner simply stop wait for the examiner to come over and repeat the instructions for you because it's important that you listen to the instructions uh, the third way that your driver's test could be administered is, is it could be a shortened driver's test which simply means that if, if most of the time the driving test is going to be 20 to 30 minutes uh, in the province of Ontario and other states in the US it's going to be reduced to 10 to 15 minutes as opposed to the longer full driver's test and then some places are testing as usual okay Michigan is testing as usual the province of Ontario is testing as usual so these are the ways that the tests are going to be administered in the days of the pandemic all right so the fundamentals all of the fundamentals of driving apply regardless of whether you're in a parking lot or you're doing a shortened driving test speed management space management observation and communication and if you're in a parking lot it's going to be even more important that you're a bobblehead that your head is moving all the time that you are observing okay and remember when you're in the parking lot and doing your test the slower you go the sharper the vehicle turns so if you're a little bit close to the pylon either readjust or slow down and the vehicle will turn and turn sharper than what you would going at a higher speed okay you will need to know your road signs because they will have signs in the parking lot for those of you doing a mini driving course in the parking lot okay you're going to need to control your speed you're going to have to stop you're going to have to merge basic right of way rules okay because you're going to have stop signs they're going to have yield signs uh, the examiner is going to be pointing in directions that they want you to turn or move especially if you're in Ohio and you're doing the Ohio maneuverability test they're going to get you to go left of the nose cone or right of the nose cone and know that if you touch any of the cones during your slow speed maneuvers in the parking lot that's an automatic fail on a driver's test so go slow make sure that you're observing looking in your mirrors and if you get anywhere near the cone simply stop readjust the vehicle and continue on they will not deduct points immediately for adjusting you get one adjustment and then after the one adjustment then they will begin to deduct points but it's better to have a couple of points deducted than it is to hit the cone and fail automatically all right so stopping positions for slow speed maneuvers for example the ohio maneuverability test which i talked about if you're in the state of ohio and you pull up to the nose cone you have to stop so the bumper is in line with the nose cone when you're backing out of the course for the ohio maneuverability test you have to stop so the front of the vehicle is in line with the rear cones on the ohio maneuverability test uh, if you're near a curb for example where they were parallel parking behind behind the large tire in that first image you have to be six to twelve inches from the curb okay you are going to lose a few points if you're 14 inches or 15 inches from the curb but it's better to be a little bit far out and just leave it at that get your three or four or five demerit points and then carry on instead of trying to readjust and then you end up hitting the curb okay because you don't want to do that because you're nervous right okay so make sure that you stay away from signs obstacles 
fixed objects the examiner don't get too close to the examiner don't drive straight up to the examiner and then stop six feet from them. Uh, that tends to make us really nervous when we're standing in parking lots and you have you know a student who's taking a driving test and they're already nervous and those types of things <laughs> uh, we tend not to put ourselves in that position anyway so try not to do that all right Okay, so speed management supposed to, uh, you know, if you do go out on the road and you're doing a shortened test, then of course you're going to have to follow the uh, posted speed limits or the flow of traffic, whichever is less. In parking lots, it's probably a good idea if you're not going more than 20 kilometers an hour or 15 miles an hour in a parking lot for the purposes of your driver's test. Okay, if you do get out on the roadway, as I said, flow of traffic and when can you drive slower? You can drive slower on a test. Uh, in congested residential areas, if you have cars parked on both sides, if you're going past a mall, for example, where there's high pedestrian traffic and it's dense types of things and whatnot. So know that there are places that you can go slower, but make sure that you're practicing in and around the test center where you're going to be taking your test on the day that you're going to be taking your test. So for example, if you're taking it on a Wednesday at 4 p.m. in the afternoon, make sure that you're practicing during the weekdays at 4 p.m. in and around the test center where you're going to be taking your test. Why does that goofy thing keep coming up? <laughs> I didn't check my slide presentation. Sorry about that. Observation, scanning patterns. As I said, if you're in a parking lot and you're doing slow speed maneuvers, you're gonna to have to be a bobblehead. And remember, the driving examiner is going to be looking for that. He or she is going to be looking for you moving your head. Before you back up, they're going to be looking to make sure that you're doing a 360 degree scan around your vehicle. That simply means that you're looking all around your vehicle before you put the vehicle into motion, into reverse. They're going to be looking to make sure that you're looking out the back window. You can use a backup camera for the purposes of your driver's test. You can't use it as your main line of sight. Okay, and it's the same thing as the state of New Jersey. Yes, you can use a backup camera for the purposes of your driver's test, but again, you can't use it as your main line of sight. You can use it, check it as you would your mirrors, but you still need to be looking out the back window for the purposes of your driver's test. All right, communication. Make sure that you are communicative effectively when you're doing your slow speed maneuvers. Make sure that when you're in reverse and you're changing directions of the vehicle, that you signal in the direction that you're going to move the vehicle. So for example, if you're backing to the left, make sure you signal to the left. If you're doing a three point turn, make sure that you signal every time you change direction of your vehicle. They will be looking for that. Uh, in the parking lot and, and then at the end when they say okay you're done don't just drive away and then make a left turn and forget the signal if you're going back to where the reserve parking is for people taking their test because they'll ding you for that okay remember the test isn't over until you're back at home <laughs> and they told you you passed until you get back home do everything by the book all right Okay, so your job on a driver's test, regardless of whether it's a closed circuit test, it's a shortened test, or any other kind of driver's test, is to take away the examiner's right to fail you. Nothing more, nothing less. Demonstrate that you have due care and control of the vehicle in either the parking lot or in changing traffic conditions if you are out on the roadway. If you're in the state of Michigan, you're in the state of Alabama, wherever you are that you're going to be doing a shortened driving test or a full driving test out on the roadway, okay? And then I still encourage you, uh, especially if you're doing a shortened driving test or your driving test as per usual, to do a practice driving test with a local driving school. There's a lot of information that I can give you to pass a driving test and be successful, but I cannot give you the details in and around the test center where you're going to be taking your test. A local driving instructor can do that. He or she teaches students to pass a driver's test every day. They know all the little details uh, of streets and hidden signs, intersections that you need to be careful at, uh, playground signs that have speed zones and those types of things. So make sure that you know this is money well invested. I know it's 150 bucks or whatnot that you gotta go up for an hour, an hour and a half with a local driving instructor, but it is money well invested. And I'll tell you why here in a second. Okay, so good luck on your driver's test. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. So we'll get back here. All right, and the reason that I wanted to revisit this in terms of COVID and pa um, practicing for passing your driver's test is unfortunately I've had a number of students who smart drivers have come back and told me that they weren't successful on their driver's test 
and unfortunately now they can't get a they can't get a, a retest until January February okay the DMVs the test centers are all backed up right now so I am encouraging you I'm haranguing you you need to be you need to double down on this you need to be even more prepared to go and do your driver's test because you want to pass first time you don't want to have to do your driver's test again because the by the time you get another test date it's going to be two or three months away because of the backlog that we've experienced because of the pandemic and unfortunately we're now seeing places uh, toronto is shutting down and you know <laughs> i'm sorry to say but i'm i'm a little bit afraid that they're going to shut down the United States as soon as Biden takes office. So if you're if you got your driver's test booked in, you know, just put other stuff on the back burner for right now because I mean, I know that most of you are in high school right now, but you know, we're coming into a period of time where you can kind of take the Christmas break and and take January and you could kind of double down on your driving and really practice your driving to be super ready for your driving test and that way you're going to pass first time because you know it's kind of like it's kind of like that saying if you don't do it right the first time when are you going to find time to do it again and this is this is kind of where we're at right now so I'm really hoping I'm really haranguing you and I'm really saying to you really double down on being super ready for your driver's test to make sure that you pass first time because you don't want to wait two or three months for a retest it just it's such a drag okay that's i'm done <laughs> i've said my piece ekram i passed yesterday on my first try thank you so much you're you're most welcome congratulations on getting your license that's really awesome uh ekram where where celebration one did you have a celebration and second where did you pass your driver's test uh jerry you're taking your test on tuesday in british columbia here that's awesome cecilia uh, I need help with this question. The question is 90 to 95% clues from vision, true or false? Uh, please. Uh, so they're saying that you collect 90 to 95% of the information in driving through vision. Um, trying to recall. I would say it's true. You do collect most of your information for driving through your uh, through your vision. Okay, Margaret, I booked uh, 10 driving lessons. Uh, might do an extra one for highway driving. That's awesome. Congratulations. Felix, you are most welcome, my friend. Corey, thank you for getting those videos up there. That's awesome. Uh, Mikey's guy took my road test. Have confidence and don't overthink. Trust me, I did those two things and passed. Awesome. Uh, Mikey, where'd you pass your driver's test? Celebration. What'd you do for your celebration? Awesome, Marion. I am due for my G test on the 9th of Dece uh, 9th of December in Niagara Falls, Ontario. That is brilliant. Con uh, good luck on your driver's test there on the 9th. Be sure to drop back and let us know how it goes. Uh, Stella, does this new driving test process apply to Alberta? Uh, my understanding is Stella that Alberta is doing a shortened driving test. Uh, if any other smart drivers have any other information about Alberta, I'm pretty sure that that's what they're doing there in Alberta. Uh, Margaret, is the New York road test in a parking lot or out on the street? My understanding, Margaret, is, is that New York is doing a shortened driving test. It's still out on the roadway. Uh, <laughs> New York City, it might have something. You know, it might be different outside of New York City, but I think inside New York City, they're still doing a shortened driving test. Uh, Bobby, my road test is on Tuesday. I was trying to practice backing into the stall for the test. In Cologne, I found it difficult with empty stalls and I was getting frustrated with my dad. And yes, Bobby, it's really tough backing into a parking space when there aren't any other vehicles around. I always find it easier to find to put to back in beside another vehicle. In an empty parking lot, uh, space, yes, it's, it's tough. It's super tough. Uh, one of the things that you might do, Bobby, is uh, oftentimes when you're backing into a parking space here, the parking space directly in front of you is in line with where you're trying to back up. So if you look forward and look at the space in front of you, that will allow you to back up into the space uh, behind you that will be easier. And the other uh, tip that I give to you, Bobby, and other smart drivers as well is to be sure that you don't back up too far because in most DMV test centers, there's going to be a concrete median back there. And if you strike that concrete median, uh, that's an automatic fail on a driver's test. So it's a little bit, it's better to be out a little bit and get a couple of demerits than it is to back up too far and, you know, ding that thing back there. Okay. 
Uh, blessing, I finally passed my permit test. Now on to the driving part. That's awesome. Congratulations on passing your learners. Uh, Mike went for my test and failed. The guy said I did really well, but went too fast in a 30 zone and not enough right hand shoulder checks, but go back on the 2nd of December. Okay, so that's awesome, Mike, that you were able to get a driving test, another driving test fairly quickly, uh, as opposed to some people I've heard. Okay, excellent. Okay, and the, and the other thing, Bobby, about that, and this is uh, uh, just a note for other smart drivers as well, you know, not every day <laughs> that you're trying to learn something is going to be a good day, okay? Uh, last week, for example, I went to jujitsu on Wednesday, and it was just like, I just laughed, and I was just like, ah, oh, that was terrible. That was just, I just feel, I felt bad, you know, I didn't have a good day, it wasn't a good training session, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, I went on Friday, and, uh, you know, I was working with the color belts. And even though I was working with the color belts and got my butt kicked, uh, I felt a lot better about Friday. Because, you know, anything with learning, we have days where there are good days and we have days that are bad days. Usually the good days outweigh the bad days in terms of our learning. But with anything in terms of learning, when we're learning something, we always, we always kind of go up and then we plateau for a little bit. And then we go up again and we kind of plateau. And I think what happened for me and, <coughs> excuse me, is in kind of jujitsu, I've kind of plateaued and I'm on a plateau for right now. And I've, I've had enough learning experience in my life that I know that that's what happens. And sometimes that will happen to you as well when you're learning to drive is you're going to get to a point where it's really tough to do something. But, you know, don't beat yourself up too bad about it. Just take a little bit of time off the day and then go back and do it again the next day and you'll find that it's a lot easier the next day. You can't, don't just keep, what I, I guess what I'm trying to say is don't just keep hammering away at it, right? Because if you just keep hammering away at it, you're just gonna get really frustrated. If it's not working, <laughs> go and do something else and then come back and try it at a different time is what I'm trying to say, okay? Uh, Pipe Dream, just passed my basic class five road test last week in Alberta, thanks for your videos. I was the full 45 minutes, including extra time for sanitizing the vehicle. Yeah, there you go. So there's a full driver's test in Alberta. And the person, I sorry, my bad. Somebody else was taking their driver's test in Alberta. So now you know what they're doing. They're doing a full driver's test in Alberta. And blessing, you passed your permit test. That's brilliant. Uh, flavored, how are you, my friend? Uh, Techie, I've been practicing this slow speed maneuvers for the Maryland test. And I also learned that in Maryland, you are not required to do parallel parking for the purposes of the driver's test. However, you are required to do a two point reverse turn. So basically what that means is you gotta back around a corner uh, for the purposes of the driver's test there in Maryland. And uh, <laughs> yes, I'll lament about that in a minute here. Uh, Ikpima, apologies if I'm not pronouncing that right. Uh, what type of test will be in BC? I have my test on Friday, December the 4th. Uh, here in British Columbia, it's a shortened driver's test. Uh, for the most part, they're not doing any parking lot tests or those types of things. They're very much following the lead of what Alberta is doing. So that's what they're doing here. Ekram, I've practiced until the time of exam. I followed your instructions mostly. Awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, take what you need. And then, you know, if it works or it doesn't work, whatever, just, you know, as long as we can help you out to pass your driver's test, that's really awesome. Uh, flavored getting my driver's license in January after practicing for almost this year with my permit. Brilliant. Uh, Jerry, I noticed you say something about deducting points for adjusting more than once. Is this the case in BC2 for reverse stall parking and parallel parking? Yes, it is, Jerry. You get one free pull-up, and then after the one free pull-up, then they start to assign demerits uh, when you're doing slow speed maneuvers and those types of things in British Columbia. That's pretty much standard across all driver's tests. They allow you one adjustment and then after that they'll assign uh, demerits, okay? Excellent. Uh, Akami, Akima, I'm not saying that right, apologize. Hi, quick question. Is it safe to turn right on a red if the lane you're turning into is clear but the lane next to it is heavy traffic? Uh, Akima, it is, you can turn right on a red light uh, if there is heavy traffic on the other side, you do want to try and turn into the spaces between the cars on the other side. So you don't, you want to try not to turn in beside another car uh, is all that you need to sort of keep uh, to try and do when you're turning right. Uh, if there is heavy traffic in the other lane, it's probably what's going to happen is, is 
the traffic flow is going to be slower than normal so you're you're not going to be going that fast anyway okay and Corey, i'll put the video up for you on turning right on a red light as well all good just enjoying the stream is an upcoming new driver brilliant uh how short did they shorten the driving test uh pi it's really going to depend on where you are taking your driver's test as to whether it's a shortened driving test whether it's going to be a parking lot test or whatnot uh where are you taking your driving test and maybe i can give you a bit more information uh uh road test earlier this month and it was about 20 to 35 minutes yeah so uh we're talking about ontario where the province of Ontario here in Canada, and it usually is 20 to 30 minutes, and they really haven't shortened that driving test in the province of Ontario there at all. It's pretty much <laughs> as usual, okay? Uh, however, they, they may make some adjustments to the driving test with recent shutdowns because of the pandemic. They Not shutdowns, but rather lockdowns in uh, Toronto and other regions in and around Toronto, okay? Sunday, I passed my road test five days ago. That's awesome. Congratulations, Sunday. Thanks for coming back and letting us know that you passed your driver's test. Congratulations. Uh, how has the first five days of driving been going? <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, Bobby, I have a mock road test on Tuesday, an hour before the road test. Hoping it helps. I get my license on Tuesday. Yes, and that will really help out, Bobby, if you've got a, you're going out with a driving school before your, your road test. That'll really help. Uh, Excellent. Uh, I'm taking it in New York City. Sorry for not saying that. No, you're welcome. Uh, that's fine. Okay, so Pi, usually most driving tests in the city of New York are not that long anyway. Most of the driving tests in New York City are only 8 to 12 minutes. So they're not very long even <laughs> as per usual. But that's pretty much par for the course in any large metropolitan area. If you went to Philadelphia or you went to Washington or... Raleigh, it would be the same. They would be shorter driving tests simply because of the number of people that are taking driving tests in those large metropolitan areas. So know that, okay? Uh, Jaden, it is a Canadian uh, channel. However, most most of what I do is I teach driving in the United States as well, okay? So uh, everything here is for the United States and I do the Canadian stuff as well, okay? Okay. Uh, Brar, you have a driving test on Wednesday. Congrats, uh, good luck on that. Uh, Larry, am I from Ontario? Uh, I'm originally from Ontario, <laughs> originally from London, Ontario. Uh, got my first driving instructor's license in Ontario, went to Western. So yeah, I'm originally from London, Ontario. I left Ontario in 2002, went to Australia for five years and then moved out West, as we say in Ontario. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Uh, Awesome. Ariel, can you help me figure out what test is what the test is like in Massachusetts? So Ariel, the test in Massachusetts is same as usual. And my understanding about the road test in Massachusetts is, is that they are using state vehicles there. So I guess that's how they're controlling the cleanliness of the vehicles during the pandemic is, is that you're using uh, state vehicles in Massachusetts all right and as well I've also got frequently asked questions up for Massachusetts as well so have a look at that over at the smart drive test website and you can get, get all the answers to your questions about the driving test uh, Jordan's congratulations to all the new drivers that recently passed and good luck to all of those going soon uh, this channel helped me so much just wanted to stop in and say hi uh, dinner time good night thanks so much Jordan for your kind words and your encouragement for other people taking their test that's really awesome have a, have an awesome night my friend Anwar, uh, when will the lockdown be over? Anwar, I'm really hoping that it doesn't get worse before it gets better. And I'm really crossing my fingers that when Biden comes in, he doesn't, he doesn't close down the American economy. Uh, because, you know, the question that I have is the shutdown didn't work when we did it in the spring and it didn't curb any of the numbers from, uh, you know, from it going up in terms of the number of people who have con contracted the coronavirus. So wh why did we think that shutting down is going to make it happen? Why is it going to make it any better than what it is now? I just, I don't know the answer to that question. Okay. Corey's put up the frequently asked questions for Massachusetts. So that's awesome. Thanks for that. Uh, Techie, what should I focus on for the test in Maryland? 
Uh, so Techie, you know, basically you're slow speed maneuvers. Make sure that you can do your two point reverse turn and then, you know, your on road stuff and focus on space management, controlling space around your vehicle. So essentially all, you know, the driving test in Maryland and all other driving tests have four major components. Space management, speed management, observation, and communication. So space management, don't get near anything. Uh, don't get near fixed objects. Don't get near other road users. Two to three second following distance. Stop at controlled intersections before the stop line, before the crosswalk or sidewalk lines. And if those two conditions don't exist, then uh, at the edge where the two roads meet, uh, stop in traffic so you can see the tires of the vehicle in front of you making clear contact with the road surface. Uh, space management, what else do we need? Don't enter an intersection that's blocked that you can't clear because if you're stuck in the intersection and the light turns to yellow and red, you're gonna that's an automatic fail on a driver's test. Speed management, uh, posted speed limit or the flow of traffic and don't dawdle, get the vehicle up to speed as quickly as possible. Observation, make sure that you're scanning well, you have a good scanning pattern in place. Remember that your scanning pattern every eight to 12 seconds Far down the road, shoulders of the road, in check your wing mirror, far down the road, uh, check your instrument panel. So every 8 to 12 seconds you should be checking your instrument panel, which means that every 8 to 12 seconds you should also be adjusting your speed. Now people ask me this about speed control, uh, you can probably go up to about 5 miles an hour over or 5 miles an hour under, but if you're doing that consistently you're not going to be successful on a driver's test. So know that that you need to control your speed and you need to be adjusting your speed every 8 to 12 seconds and it's directly linked to your scanning pattern okay anytime you make turns you have to shoulder check 90 degrees of turn of the head two times for turns two times for lane changes and when you're lane changing or moving the vehicle sideways mirror signal shoulder check so you're signaling shoulder checking checking your mirror you want to do that two times before you start moving over. You want minimum three flashes on the signal before you start moving the vehicle. Leave the, the signal on until you're completely in the other lane. So that's observation. Uh, when you're reversing, make sure you look out the back window for the duration of your backing. Uh, you can use a backup camera, but don't use it as your primary line of sight. Just check it. Check it as you would your mirrors, and then look out the rear window and back up. Okay? Uh, and then finally, communication, lights and signals, horn, use your horn sparingly because in this day and age, unfortunately, it's seen as a sign of aggression. Uh, hand gestures, make sure, you know, cyclist or pedestrian not sure what you're doing. Make sure you use all five fingers. Don't tell them they're number one on the driver's test. Uh, eye contact. And then finally, the most important way that we communicate with the traffic is the position of our vehicle on the roadway. So if the vehicle's in the left turning lane, for example, it's a good chance that that vehicle is going to turn left. So those are the four major components for the driving test, excuse me, the driving test there in Maryland, but also the driving test just about anywhere else is going to be looking for those four major components. All right. Uh, Margaret, tip for anyone trying to get an appointment for a permit test in New York, check the DMV for Northern Westchester, Rockland, or Putnam County. New York City is booked solid for months. And excellent. Thank you for that information, Margaret. That's really great for anybody there in the city of New York trying to get a driving test. Ariel, awesome, thank you. I'm actually struggling with being comfortable with the gas pedal. Okay, and Corey may have put the video up for you already, uh, how to control your speed, Ariel, okay? And again, Ariel, this, your speed control is tied directly to your, um, to your scanning pattern. So every eight to 12 seconds you're in and you're looking at your instrument panel and that should be helping you with your speed control. And probably what I need to do is I probably need to redo that video as well because I'm reshooting older videos where I was kind of pontificating for a couple of minutes at the beginning of the video. <laughs> Watch some of the old videos. I'm like, oh, wow, that's, that's pretty painful. So anyway, I'm redoing that. So I probably should uh, consider redoing that one as well. Okay. Uh, Warren, what is the road test like in Connecticut? I don't think I have any in any information about Connecticut, Warren. Let me... Uh, see what I got here. Just let, give me a couple of minutes. Uh, Pipe Dream in Alberta, they are switching to the new road test model as of the 1st of December to allow more private examiners to conduct road tests to make it easier to book a test early in 2021. Okay, well, that's good news. Definitely good news. 
Stella, my driving test is next month on the 15th in Edmonton. Any tips on how to pass the test in the winter? Yes, uh, Stella, Corey will put the video up for you on taking a driving test in the winter time in snow and that'll really help you. Uh, Rick, your driver's test is tomorrow. Good luck on your driver's test tomorrow. That's awesome. One, two, three, four. I have my test next week and I'm feeling nervous. How do I minimize feeling nervous? Uh, practice, remember to breathe in through your belly button, out through your mouth. Okay, just practice breathing and just and the mantra okay i can do this and visualize the win that's what you do okay uh trudes brown i'm having problem holding the steering wheel steady when reversing any suggestions uh yes one of the ex exercises that i give people for reversing is find a laneway or some place where you can back up in a straight line for a period of time uh, and the other thing, uh, definitely have a look at the video that I put up last week about backing along a curb. Now, I don't suggest that you back up along the curb to start, but find a roadway where there's a shoulder, you know, there's pavement and then there's a gravel shoulder and back up along that. That will also help you with the reversing because when you get off the pavement onto the gravel shoulder, then you're, you, you know that you're, you know, you need to fix that up again. But the other thing is, is too, is you know, only back up a vehicle length or a little bit more than a vehicle length and then look forward too. Make sure you're looking forward because if you're looking forward, that's going to see whether you're straight or not with the vehicle and that'll help you to go straight back. All right, so those are a couple of tips you can employ there. AK, in uh, case two vehicles arrive same time at four-way stop or uncontrolled intersection and turn left simultaneously at a residence, how should they proceed? Can they go at the same time? Uh, if both vehicles are turning left, yes, they both can go at the same time, okay? Because they're going to miss each other when they're going left, okay? So, yes, you can definitely do that. Uh, DC, I had my license for a month now, but haven't driven on the highway yet. I don't know if I should wait some more or just do it. Uh, DC, just do it. Uh, you know, and go with a, a, a driver who has some experience, and, you know, they can give you a few pointers and those types of things. But, you know, just get out on the highway. And the other thing is... is when you're out on the highway, just manage your space well and, you know, have a good following distance behind other traffic and that way nothing is going to be, uh, you know, aggressive. You're not going to have to do any aggressive braking or stopping or steering and those types of things and just look down the road as far as you can when you get out on the highway. But you definitely want to be getting out on the highway and doing what you need to do there. Big B, hey, I'm in Jersey and I'm having problem with K-turns and parallel parking I had failed my road test twice. Okay, so Big B, definitely have a look at uh, the COVID-19 uh, in the, um, <laughs> what am I trying to say? In the parking lot, slow speed maneuvers and get those 36 inch one meter tall pylons and definitely work in the parking lot because I think what you're having trouble with in terms of parallel parking in your, in your three point turn or your K turn is that you just don't know where your vehicle is in space and place. Okay, so you don't know the second biggest blind area on your vehicle is out the passenger side of the vehicle. And it's really quite a bit of practice for you to kind of know and feel where that side of the vehicle is. So if you get those 36 inch tall pylons and you work with those and you drive up along them with the passenger side, that's really going to give you a good sense of where that side of the vehicle is as well behind you as well. Uh, you need to sort of figure out where that is and if you can do that with pylons. And the other thing that I suggest to you is just drive into the pylons to figure out where your vehicle is in space and place. And, you know, just, you know, go and rent some of those pylons from an industrial rental shop. And, uh, you know, they're inexpensive. They're only 10 or 12 bucks for the day for five or six of them. And uh, work with those and figure out where your vehicle is in space and place. And that will really help you with your three-point turn, your K-turn and your parallel parking, so do that. Uh, Trude, you're most welcome, my friend. Okay, we got all that, excellent. Max, uh, where do you stop if there is no stop line, crosswalk, or sidewalk? Okay, so Max, <coughs> excuse me. Stop at the edge where the two roads meet. So usually there's a line in the pavement, just a kind of a faint line you can see there. But it's essentially just stopping with the front of the vehicle before it enters the intersection is where you stop. That's the third stopping position. Justin, I passed my G2 and am practicing for my G. How critical are they about merging speed? Do you need to be exactly 100 or 80? Uh, what if you were 102 or 82? Okay, well, they're not going to ding you for two kilometers an hour, Justin. But you definitely 
Uh, if you are merging out onto a freeway or multi-lane roadway, you definitely should be able to get the vehicle up to the posted speed limit. And Corey will put the video up for you on how to merge correctly onto a freeway and it'll show you how to do that. But it's essentially you have to get the vehicle up to speed on the on-ramp acceleration, you know, because sometimes different configurations, it, you're going to have to use the on-ramp a little bit to get up to speed. But you, you know, as you're coming out, pick your spot out on the freeway or highway and then aim for that spot. And that way you'll get in there and make sure that you've got your signal on the whole time to indicate to other traffic out there that that's what you're doing as you're actually coming out. Okay. Giho, what is this? <laughs> Teaching people how to drive, get their driver's license. So we can help you. If you have any questions, you're going for a driver's license, you're definitely in the right place. Okay. Uh, thanks. Just when they both turn left, the other vehicle should be at your right or your left side, residential intersection. Yeah. So, uh, AK, probably the best thing that I would suggest to you is just go down to a four way stop sign to intersection and just watch the traffic move through the intersection. But if, the two vehicles are across from each other and this is I'll just clarify because I didn't say that point before but if that vehicle over there is turning left and you're turning left over here then those two vehicles can turn left because you're going to miss each other in the middle of the intersection so you can do that okay all right all right Flavored, uh, I learned from the DMV in my state that the test is going to involve the examiner being outside the car and driving in and communicating through the tablet or radio transmitter. Uh, yes, okay, so flavored, yes, it's going to be in Florida. It's gonna depend on where it is, but it is a closed circuit test. The examiner will be outside of the vehicle. As I said at, in the beginning, uh, you will need to bring your mentor and make sure that you, <laughs> can understand the instructions. If you don't understand the instructions of the examiner, and this goes uh, for Genuine, and this goes for all other smart drivers, if you don't understand the instructions that the examiner is giving you, simply stop the vehicle and get clarif clarification. Do not proceed unless you understand exactly what the driving examiner wants you to do, uh, because that could be the difference between you passing and failing your driver's test. I know it's intimidating, I know you're nervous, but simply stop and figure out exactly what you need to do. Don't move the vehicle unless you know what you're going to do. Okay. Okay. Uh, Michael, 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 Michael. Where's your question? Uh, I think I missed your answer to the question about driving lengths. Is the driving still the same in Toronto due to the pandemic? Okay. So Michael, my understanding is that there hasn't been any change to the length of the driving test there in Toronto and in Ontario, they're still doing tests as far as I know. I haven't heard anything different with the lockdown and those types of things. As soon as I hear some information, I'll put it up over at the Smart Drive Test website for you, but I haven't heard anything different. They are shortening them a little bit. They're kind of like, you know, 15 to 20 minutes now instead of, you know, 20 to 40 minutes. So that's the only thing that I know about the driving tests there. Uh, any info on the Michigan test? As far as I know, the Michigan test is the same. It's an on-road test. It's anywhere between 15 and 20 minutes, and it's going to depend kind of where you are in the state there in Michigan. But for the most part, it's still an on-road test uh, in the state of Michigan. Um, Marion, I'm not sure how to get on the highway. I'm getting on the highway with the speed of 100 kilometers an hour. Okay, so you're doing the right thing. And I think Corey put the video up here. I believe he did. How to correctly merge onto a freeway. So definitely have a look at that. Uh, Bobby, could you give some clarification on four-way stops so we don't get an automatic fail? Okay, so four-way stop signs. I don't like four-way stop signs. I like, I like uh, roundabouts. They're now kind of my favorite. Uh, Tim, all the best. Have a great night, my friend. Enjoy your dinner. Four-way stop signs. So four-way stop signs, first person to arrive, vehicle on the right, okay? That's the basic kind of rules of a four-way stop sign. However, uh, you know, if you go to a four-way stop sign intersection and it's busy, you're gonna know that the cross traffic will take turns. So one street will go and then the other street will go. And then all of the other rules of two-way stop signs apply, okay? So it's straight through traffic, overturning traffic, it's right turning traffic, 
uh, over left turning traffic. Those are the right of way rules as the cross traffic is, is going and taking turns. Uh, if you do get a pedestrian that shows up, the pedestrian is going to throw kind of a wrench into the works because the pedestrian has the right of way and is going to go first and the other traffic will have to wait. Uh, the traffic, if they are going straight through on the uh, road that's going the same way as the pedestrian, they can proceed straight through the intersection if the pedestrian is going. But if you're unsure about four-way stop sign intersections, then what I suggest to you is to just go down to the four-way stop sign intersection for about 20 minutes when it's busy and watch the traffic move through the four-way stop sign intersection. I know it's a little weird that you're just going to st stop there, but go and do that because they there's kind of a, it has its own kind of rules which are there but then it has its own culture of how a four-way stop sign intersection works and you kind of got to figure that out okay uh michael straight goes first then right yes so so as i said it's when it's busy the crossroads are going to take turns so one road's going to go and then the other road's going to go okay they take turns so that's in the ideal world of everybody going straight and then after going straight straight through traffic has the right of way over turning traffic so say i'm on this side of the intersection and there's a vehicle over there that's going to go left i have the right of way because i'm going straight the left turning vehicle has to wait for me so i would go straight and then the left turning vehicle would turn all right now if i was sitting here and i was turning right and there was a left turning vehicle then i would go first because i'm turning right and the other vehicle is turning left okay now if I'm going straight through and the vehicle on the other side is turning right, then I we could both go at the same time. So as I said, if you're not really sure <laughs> about four-way stop signs or they confuse you a little bit, then go down to the four-way stop sign intersection, stand there and watch the traffic go through. And I mean, where I live here in Vernon, we have a high school just over here and there's a four-way stop sign over there. So you can just go down there and have a coffee and sit out at the coffee shop and watch the traffic go through the four-way stop sign intersection. So that... That's another option that you could find is find a coffee shop near an intersection with a four-way stop sign. Nicole, I uh, have my license now. Your videos help so much. That's awesome. Congratulations. Uh, Genuine, uh, be happy you've gotten your permit. Just focus on your driving so you can pass the test when you're ready. Yes. AK, you are doing a great job and really thank you for what you are giving to us. You're a great man. Thank you so much, AK. That's awesome. And thank you very much for your kind words. Really, really awesome. Uh, Bobby, uh, yeah, okay, so we gave you some more information on that. Uh, okay, Michael, I'm not understanding that. Blessing, I am driving test is January, February of next year. I just need to stop procrastinating on my learning how to drive. So the best way to do that, Blessing, is to actually go and book your driver's test, okay? And then you've got a goal. You've got something to work towards. So that's what I suggest to you in terms of uh, how to you know, ward off procrastination because that's what I do with myself as well as I set myself dates that I want something done or I'm working towards it. You know, I don't always get to the deadline, <laughs> but <laughs> that's one of the ways that we can ward off procrastination instead of, you know, eating Doritos and sitting on the couch watching reruns of baking, Breaking Bad, right? Okay. Uh, Michael, why does it work that way? Is it, is there a scientific way? Uh, Michael, there's no... <laughs> Uh, driving is not scientific in any stretch of the imagination. No, it's not. It really isn't scientific. It's, it's driving is an art form. It really is a It really is an art form. Uh, shadow, any info on the California driving test? The, sh the California driving test is a shortened driving test. They're still doing on-road tests there in the state of California. Uh, say Hill, how do you handle staying awake through long drives? Uh, you, there's a few things you can do. First of all, get some sleep before you go on a long drive. Make sure that you take a break every couple of hours, have drinks and food available in the vehicle. Uh, the other thing that I really like to do on long drives is I go and get audiobooks. Uh, you can download them on your iPad, I, not your iPad, your iPod and if you hooks into your audio system in your car or you can just go and get uh, CDs from the library which is what I do because I have a CD player in my car and listen to books audio books while you're driving uh, and I find that that's really keeps me engaged while I'm driving uh, so taking a break every couple of hours 
uh, knowing where you're going to take a break. Have a place when you do stop, get out of the car, go for a walk. You know, don't just go in and go to the toilet and come back out and get back in the car because that's not going to do you any good, right? You need to go out and get a walk, go for a walk. You need to get the blood circulating in your body and those types of things, right? So make sure you take a break every couple of hours. Know exactly where you're going to uh, stop. Uh, <laughs> Michael says drink more coffee. The problem with drinking more coffee is, is then you got to go to the toilet more often, right? Because you got to pee unless you're one of those kind of odd people who you know goes to the toilet like twice a day i'm not that person when i drink coffee <laughs> especially when i'm driving i gotta be someplace close to a toilet so uh yeah so you know drink lots of water uh keep yourself hydrated break every couple of hours listen to audiobooks and those types of things are you traveling on a long trip by yourself or are you going with somebody else you're going with your family and those types of things okay uh Zacharias, I hope you are doing well. I'm having my test this Wednesday, but I failed the first time I went. I've been practicing all the mistakes I made. Wish me good luck. Uh, good luck, Zacharias. You're going to do awesome, and you're going to get your license. Drop back and let us know how that goes for you. Uh, Jerry, I think you missed my question. Uh, will there be points deducted if a vehicle is within three feet of my vehicle during parallel parking or automatic fail? Uh, no. No. Okay, so Jerry, what you're going to be within three feet of the vehicle that you're parallel parking over there. So when you pull up to parallel park, just imagine a person standing between your vehicle and that vehicle over there. Now, uh, if you're parallel parking, so as soon as you, so you're coming up in preparation to parallel park, approximately half a block before the turn, you're going to put your turn signal on in preparation to do that. And then you're going to pull up beside the vehicle. You're going to look out the back, make sure your back ends are lined up and you're going to put the vehicle into reverse to put your reverse lights on to tell traffic behind you that you're going to parallel park. Now, when you put the vehicle in reverse to parallel park and you start to back up, if some goofball behind you decides that they don't want to wait for you, most traffic will wait for you. But in the unlikely event that this goofball behind you decides that they're going to go around you, if they do that, if they go around you, just stop. Okay? Stop, wait for them to go around you, and then complete your parallel park. All right? And I will say this to you, and I will say this to all smart drivers. If you were in the least bit doubt on your driver's test about what to do, simply stop. Stop the vehicle. Wait a few seconds, the traffic will clear, and then you can proceed, okay? And that is a perfect example of that, that if you're trying to parallel park and some goofball decides that they're going to go around you while you're parallel parking, simply stop. Because if you're stopped and they come within two or three feet of you, that's their fault. That's not your fault because you're stopped. You did everything you possibly could to communicate to other traffic that you were parallel parking. You signaled correctly, you put the vehicle into reverse as soon as you stopped to indicate that you were going to back up and parallel park. And so, you know, most of the time the drivers need to wait for you. That's just part of driving culture. But if they decide that they're gonna go past you, then that's on them, that's not on you if you're stopped. But if you're still moving, then that's on you. So just stop the vehicle, let them go by you and then continue to do your parallel park. Photo, what should I expect on my driving test in the lower mainland if the rain is following? Uh, photo, the only thing that's going to be different in the rain is, is that you're going to have to know how to turn on the defrost and you're going to have to know how to turn on the windshield wipers, right, for the purposes of your driving test. And again, uh, for rain, have a look at the video on winter driving and taking your driving test in the snow and ice. It's going to be exactly the same in the rain for you down there in the lower mainland. You simply slow down back from where you actually want to stop and then you creep up to where you actually want to stop so you can get stopped there because it's it's going to be a little bit more slippery for driving in the rain and those types of things apparently obviously you know put your headlights on too most newer vehicles the headlights are going to come on automatically but you definitely want to make sure that you have your headlights on when you're driving in the rain so that other traffic can see you and those types of things uh trav driving at night yes there is a night driving video here and uh, Corey will put that up for you as well. That'll definitely help you out. Uh, Epic, my friend, uh, been watching your videos and driving instructors for road test tips. Uh, speaking of New Jersey, some of their facilities have been closed due to the holiday travel, uh, coronavirus sites. Uh, one is Deptford Camden. Yeah, and that's, 
what I'm I'm afraid of is is that they're going to start closing down DMVs, and especially if Biden comes in and does a shutdown of the American economy, they're going to shut down the DMVs again, and we're going to be back to what we were in the spring. So let's all cross our fingers. Let's all write letters to our Congress people, our senators, uh, all of the MPs here in Canada, and tell these people that shutdowns don't work. <laughs> let's tell them that we want to keep it open we want to get our license we want to keep going with the economy okay so let's all do that uh genuine i don't need to relax myself and uh not get so overly eager behind the wheel and distracted so easily it's one of my weaknesses i need to work on yeah and it's just a matter of time you know it's practice it's experience all of those things will definitely help you out uh shadow can you list all the ways you could instantly fail a test uh, i can list a few of them for you so for the purposes of a driver's test, yellow and red lights are the same color. Uh, you need to bring the vehicle to a stop because if you would enter an intersection on a yellow and you get halfway through the intersection, the examiner looks up and sees the light go to red. That's an automatic fail on a driver's test. Uh, striking a fixed object is an automatic fail on a driver's test. So if it's out on the roadway or in a parking lot or a cone, you strike one of those, it's an automatic fail on a driver's test. You enter an intersection you can't clear. For example, if you, if you know, say there's a traffic's backed up on the other side of the intersection, you go into the intersection, the light turns red, that's an automatic fail on a driver's test. If you execute an action contrary to any uh, action, if you execute an action contrary to a regulatory sign, so for example, speed signs, uh, turning not permitted, that's an automatic fail on a driver's test. If you execute an action where another driver has to take evasive action to avoid hitting you, that's an automatic fail on a driver's test. If the driving examiner intervenes in your driving, for example, they put the transmission into neutral or they take control of the steering wheel, that's an automatic fail on a driver's test. And then all of the other ways that you potentially could fail is just a matter of demeriting out. And the reason that most people demerit out on a driver's test a, they're too cautious because they didn't practice enough, and B, they simply just didn't practice at all, and they their their observation, they're not shoulder checking, they're not signaling correctly, they're not signaling when they're reversing, they're not scanning properly, they're not looking in the right places when they're moving the vehicle sideways or those types of things. So those are all of the ways that you could potentially fail a driver's test. However, what I say to smart drivers and people who are going for a driver's test, don't think of all the ways that you potentially could fail, but think of all the ways you could pass because there's way more <laughs> options and buttons to push for you to be able to pass a driver's test as opposed to fail a driver's test. Yes, Michael, thank you for that. Speeding in a school zone is an automatic fail on a driver's test. Thank you for reminding me of that. Uh, Jerry, do turning signals need to be on for the entire duration of parking? I'm having trouble noticing that they went off and turning them back on. Yeah, that is pretty tough when they pop off on you, Jerry, and it does happen every now and again. But yes, you do need to have it on for the duration of backing up uh, when you're when you're parking for sure. Uh, Shadow, uh, okay, so we did that. Uh, Dion, you your videos helped me get my driver's license. Thanks a lot. You're most welcome, and congratulations on getting your driver's license. That's really awesome. Congratulations. Okay, so uh, Trav, going back to the night driving stuff, I'll just go over that a little bit for you. Uh, looking farther down the road, following other traffic, look for the traffic signs. That'll all help you to identify where the road is because that's the other thing about driving at night. And the other thing about driving at night, the farther you get away from cities, the more you have to rely on your headlights of your car. And your headlights of your car are actually really poor at giving you light and those types of things. So know that road signs are reflective. They're usually along the roadways, uh, buildings lit buildings and signs and those types of things will be along the roadways as well. Uh, one of the things I don't put this down, I don't tell people this often, but if you're on a multi-lane highway in the middle of the night, for example, say two, three in the morning, one of the things I recommend to people is to drive down the center of the road. That way, if there's animals on the roadway at night, you've got some space to move left or right. Um, in my experience, if there are animals on the roadway, you're not going to get any chance to move out of, to do any evasive action anyway. Uh, and I know that from both running over kangaroos in Australia and running over deers in the state of Michigan, that they just step out and it's like, boom, and it's over. There isn't really much you can do about it. So 
Uh, if you are concerned about animals at night stepping out in front of your vehicle, you can get some of those animal whistles that you can glue to the front of your vehicle, like on the bumper or something like that. If you're doing a lot of night driving, I might suggest you do those. Uh, they may help you out. Okay. Uh, Kyra, any uh, tips for backing into a space? Uh, the biggest tip I can give you, Kyra, for backing into a space is try to back in uh, beside another vehicle. You'll find that a lot easier than trying to back into a space where there aren't any cars. And the other thing about it is if you're backing into a parking space, the parking spaces in front of you are usually in line with the spaces behind. So look forward at the space in front of you and that will get you to get your vehicle straight and then you can back straight up into the space behind you. Uh, the last tip for backing up is don't go too far because generally there's a concrete block back there and if you strike that concrete block that's an automatic fail in your driver's test so it's better to be out a little bit get a couple of demerits than it is to back up too far and strike that uh, concrete barrier back there uh excellent <laughs> awesome uh aurora looking at speedo meter after every 12 seconds also look at mirrors for scanning yes excellent but you're missing signs okay so when you're looking down the road, look farther down the road and that way you can pick out the road signs. Okay, Lillian, you have your driver's test in three weeks. That's awesome, epic. Also find hazard perception clips from other countries applicable to the United States and Canada because we are not tested on hazard perception. Uh, yeah, however, it really is uh, integral to a driver's test is that hazard perception stuff. Uh, Aaron, I always come short when parallel parking and I want to know how to fix that. Uh, by the way, thank you for going live and doing this. It really helps. Uh, Aaron, you're most welcome. <coughs> okay, photo. Can you explain parking on a hill with a corner? I'm not really um, not sure what you're asking me there. Uh, Max, can you use a backup camera? Yes, you can. You can use it. You can't use it as your main line of sight, but you can check it as you would check your mirrors. Uh, downhill right side. Okay. Excellent. Okay, we're going to leave it there for tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions at all, uh, drop me a note down in the comment section there. Send me an email, rick at smartdrivetest.com. I'll be more than happy to help you out to get your driver's license. Check out the frequently asked questions new over on the Smart Drive Test website for your state. I'm working through those. Uh, hopefully get them done by next week. I'll have them done before Christmas for sure. <laughs> you got a driver's test coming up this week. Good luck on that. And if you passed your driver's test in the last couple of weeks, congratulations, all the very best. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.